Hi guys, Deborah Dondelinger here. This is Friday, November the 11th, 2016. And this is a short tapping video to help us as we deal with our response and reaction to the presidential election this week. I think everybody's had, or not everybody, a lot of my um, social media friends have had strong reactions to the results of the election. Whether you were a Hillary Clinton supporter or a Donald Trump supporter or a third party supporter, there have been, um, I, I don't know who's feeling centered right now. So let's do some general tapping on this um, election anxiety, and then I want to get into a couple more specifics. I'm assuming you know how to tap, what EF, uh, tapping or EFT is. If you don't, you might want to look at a beginner video, or you can just tap along with us. It's a way of calming our nervous system using, and we'll speak out loud as we tap. It's important to be specific with your words. So if I use a word that doesn't relate or resonate with you, I choose another word that's more um, helpful. Um, rate your stress on a scale of 0 to 10, or uh, your unease about the election, or your anger, or your fear, or your grief. It's probably changing every day. Um, when I was working earlier this afternoon, I was probably about an 8. Right now, I've done a lot of tapping, so I'm down to a 0. But just pick one, one feeling you have about the election that doesn't feel so good and give it a number between 0 to 10. Okay, so even though I feel this election anxiety, we're tapping on the side of our hand, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel this fear when I think about the election results, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel a sense of loss and grief, when I think about the discord in our country right now, I deeply and completely accept myself. Moving through the points, beginning of the eye, this election stress, this election overload, this election freak out, this election wounding, this obsession with the election, this sense of division with the election, this sense of embarrassment with the election, all these election feelings. Take a nice deep breath. And go ahead and pick one specific aspect, one specific feeling, and do another round of tapping. Um, pause the video and then come back when you're ready. So one of the words I've heard when we talk about the election results is, is trauma. And I do agree that some people have been traumatized. There are four aspects of a traumatic event. One is that it's unexpected. One is that we feel powerless. One is that we feel isolated. One is that we feel like our safety or our identity has been threatened. I think the reason that this election has been so not riveting, polarizing, is that people's identity feel like people feel like their identities are on the line. Their identities, their values are being questioned or examined or made fun of. Nobody, nobody voted for Trump because he is inappropriate with women. That's not why people voted for him. Nobody voted for email because she put her emails on a server she shouldn't have. People made their choices for very specific and strong values and identity. And we feel like our identity is threatened. And when our values are threatened, we get angry, scared, and we lose our center. When I was doing my own personal work on the results, what I got very clear about is my identity as a woman was I felt very threatened. I felt like we women were powerless, victimized, and I had to do some work. And then I got very clear that, no, I will see a female president in my lifetime. That's not an issue. It will happen. And I no longer am in the system of women and men, more powerful, less powerful. Just not in my system anymore, despite experiences to the contrary as a child. And I've done my work around this. So for you, think about what part of your identity is being threatened. And this is big, and I, I don't want to trigger anybody. But whether you're, you're gay, you're a person of color, you're an immigrant, you're female, you're a white, hardworking man, you're rural, you, any, any part of your identity where you feel like you're being ridiculed and attacked, tune into that. 
and we're going to tap. Even though my identity as a woman has felt on the line, I am open to finding the power within myself and claiming that identity for myself. Even though I don't know how to feel safe when I'm being made fun of. I notice all the times and places where I have allies and I am safe. Even though I thought this person stood for me, I reclaim my individual power now. So moving through the points, my identity is a woman. 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 My identity is a powerful woman. My identity is a woman. Take a nice deep breath. What you might be noticing is that other events in the past are coming up in your memory. The time X, Y, and Z happened, the time this person said this, the time you get the idea. Those are very powerful things to work on with tapping. If it's not too big of a deal, you can tap on it by yourself. But if there's a lot of charge there and trauma associated with it, find somebody who does tapping professionally. I mean, I definitely do. There are many, many EFT practitioners out there who are good and helpful and work on that. You'll be very surprised at the relief from working on the past events, how they affect you today. So whether your identity is white man, woman of color, gay, lesbian, I, I can't even name all the categories. Look at how you feel about your identity right now, if there are past events that are coming into your mind, and work and tap on those separately. The last piece I want to close with is looking at where your energy is. I've gotten very clear these last four days that I am not putting my energy out. I'm not going to let myself be scattered or distracted, that my power is in the moment, how I think, how I feel, and how I choose to act. So notice right now, whether you're feeling your energy is inside of you and aligned and powerful, whether you feel your energy is outside reacting. And notice what it would feel like to imagine bringing your energy back into your center. Some of you might not know what I'm talking about, but I think most of you will. So we're going to do some tapping. Even though I had gotten off track, I have felt very uncentered. I choose now to notice how powerful I feel when I come back inside. Even though I think the world's problems are way bigger than I am, I choose to notice what's in front of me right now. Even though I feel like I can't fix what's broken. I choose to notice that I can fix what's in front of me. Feeling centered and aligned. Feeling reactive and powerless. Some things feel too big for me to do. Some things feel easy for me to do. I choose how I feel. I choose how I think. And I choose what I value. Okay, take a nice deep breath. So once we've worked through these different aspects from the election, uh, feeling powerless, feeling the unexpectedness of it, feeling how our identity's been threatened, noticing where we're centering our energy inside ourselves or reaching out, I want you to go one step further. And I want you to start thinking about how are you deeply listening to people who are different than you? 
finding the value of what people are saying, not re people who are different from you, not reacting, moving past the anger, and listening to what they need. If you notice yourself jumping to anger or fear, stop, tap, and then see if you can move down below it. So what is the other person needing and what are you needing? And I want to be very clear. I know many of you work with, within systems of racial inequality. You work within systems that feel bigger than you. I am not at all here blaming the victim, blaming the person has less power. I am saying that we each have our own individual power and then we can work to do our part within the systems. So I hope I'm very clear here that I am not saying if you've been hurt, it's your fault. Okay, there's so many aspects here to keep working on. I'm going to stop here. Tap, tap, tap. Reach out to people. Keep go breathing and going inward. There are so many tools we have to um, navigate and transform what has been a challenging week for many people. I love you all and... Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and uh, rest of your life because I don't know if you're going to ever see me again. All right. Thank you. Bye.